Project Zomboid is ridiculously in-depth, to the extent that it's sometimes an uncomfortably realistic portrayal of what a zombie apocalypse would look like for the vast majority of us. What I mean by that is that most of us would die as Project Zomboid does not hold back with its survival system. Some of the seemingly small mistakes you make can kill your character in seconds, so I'm here to keep your tiny pixelated person alive for as long as possible. With help from Wheels from Dicebreaker, who's lost hours and as many characters to Project Zomboid's Unrelenting Undead, I'm Zoe Delahunty Light, and here's 21 Project Zomboid beginner's tips to help you stay unbitten for as long as possible. You are most vulnerable when you start your first handful of games of Project Zomboid, not just because you have no armour, food or weapons, but also because you probably don't know how to deal with zombies yet. Huge groups of zombies will wander around the streets and I cannot stress enough how much you should avoid these. Zombies are slow, but so are you when you attack meaning you can quickly be swarmed while you're trying to deal with a couple of the undead. The best approach to start with is to kite zombies and draw them away from populated areas, breaking their paths by making them climb over fences or break through doors. Even then, try to only take on one or two at a time and get them on the floor as soon as possible so you can do a quick head stomp to dispatch them swiftly. Always, always keep track of how many zombies are around you. Crucially, this includes those coming from behind you. You're most vulnerable to attacks from behind as you don't have eyes in the back of your head, so frequently check your six and move alongside walls or fences so you're at least protected on one side. Not all starting towns are created equal. By far the easiest is Rosewood, with the hardest being, in my opinion, West Point. Rosewood is rural with plenty of forests and a smaller suburb, meaning there's less places for you to get trapped or hemmed in by zombies. Explore further away from the town centre in Rosewood and you'll find proportionally less zombies, making this a good starting point for getting to grips with the game. The fire department and police station, being in such a small town, are easy to find and have useful tools, weapons and clothes stashed inside. I'd recommend voyaging into West Point only when you feel fairly confident in Project Zomboid. Although it's by no means the largest location in Project Zomboid, being bordered by the river and near Louisville, means there's a ton of zombies and you're fenced in by the flowing waters on the eastern side of West Point. Project Zomboid doesn't spoon feed you anything, so either you can be incredibly lucky and stumble across secret stashes or increase your odds of finding such a windfall and hunt for annotated maps. These maps are treasures in and of themselves as they reveal the location of secret stashes or dangerous areas, which is just as useful. It's obvious why this is a good thing, so on to the next point. Project Zomboid works in a similar way to Fallout New Vegas. If you want useful perks, you're gonna have to deal with the downsides too. Negative perks are an inevitable part of Zomboid, so suck it up. However, some of them are way easier to deal with than others. Smoking, short-sighted and hard of hearing, for example, don't make too much difference to play. Smoking just requires you to keep cigarettes on hand to feed your nicotine addiction, which you can find in gas stations or convenience stores, but don't smoke in real life, friends, it will fuck you up. Short-sighted affects the speed of zombies fading into your vision, but find some glasses and you can get your vision back to normal, and the fading is negligible anyway. Hard of hearing muffles sound and is absolutely fine. You won't really notice it that much. For those of you playing the standard scenario, your apocalypse will start in the summer, but enjoy that warm weather and those longer days while you can because it won't last forever. Eventually, autumn will kick in, which has more extreme weather like storms, so find yourself an umbrella because literally an umbrella does help, some reliable shelter, or even better, a base before summer ends. As the world collapses outside of Knox County, so will all of the things that you rely on and probably take for granted. That means that eventually the power will go out and water will stop running, which means it's time for you to go find a generator, power said generator with gas siphoned from cars, and start to collect rainwater. Do not run a generator inside, however, as it will emit carbon dioxide and that carbon dioxide will poison you. You will need a handbook to learn how to work a generator, but they hopefully shouldn't be that hard to come by, I don't think. I never had a problem with it anyway. 
When you first spawn, make sure to avoid any newbie mistakes by immediately closing any curtains and turning off any lights. This will reduce the likelihood of zombies detecting you while you're busy making your character less squishy and more deadly. This rule also applies to exploring houses too. Remove broken glass before crawling through a shattered window, otherwise you'll get cut and start to bleed. Not good. Posh, big houses have a 10% chance of having burglar alarms that will attract all nearby zombies if they go off, and one's pretty far away too. The sound these alarms emit stretch 600 tiles in Project Zomboid with all zombies nearby converging on your location, so if you trip an alarm, get out as soon as humanly possible, flee and prepare for a fight. Going into a forest can break a zombie's line of sight. After sight, sound is the next priority for zombies, so as well as staying quiet, you mainly want to try and distract zombies when you're fleeing from them. Go around houses, through doors, hide in forests, jump fences, whatever breaks their line of sight is a good bet. Watch out for zombies hidden in forests, however, as they can hide behind trees and jump out at unsuspecting fleshbags like you. Zombies might be dead, but that doesn't mean they're entirely useless. Some of them are not just carrying handy items, but wearing them too in the form of clothes, some of which have high armour values and will help shield you from the teeth of the undead. However, you can't go slashing into a zombie and expect to be able to wear their outfit as you will have damaged it in the process of staying alive. Blunt weapons don't damage clothes worn by zombies though, so use a baseball bat or hammer if you fancy trying on a zombie's outfit. This apocalypse took everyone by surprise, which means that you don't have time to develop the skills you need to survive. Better late than never though. Find a TV and watch the Life and Living channel at 6am, 12pm and 6pm for free skill points in things like cooking and carpentry. Miss any of those broadcasts and you have another chance to learn such valuable life skills as you can find VHS tapes with these shows on. Fresh food will go off, and eaten rotten food will give you a nasty case of food poisoning. As time progresses, you're better off finding canned food and a can opener to go with it. Freezers will keep food fresh in perpetuity, however, until you thaw it. Get one in your base as soon as you can before every last bit of fresh food in Knox County, along with its newly dead populace, starts to rot. Working and slash or fueled up cars are hard to come by, but when you find one, make a mental note of it if you can't use it immediately, as lord they are massively useful. Cars are mobile storage, you can sleep in them, in the winter they keep you warm, and you can drive around and use their horn to draw large groups of zombies away from useful areas. After around nine-ish days, a helicopter will appear and fuck you up. The way it works is that the helicopter, if it sees you, will follow you around, drawing hordes of zombies your way and it won't leave you alone for hours. Do not be near your base when this happens or in it after it spots you as hide in there and with the helicopter hovering above, it'll almost definitely get broken into by the undead. Radios can warn you when the helicopter is coming if you set one up, so make that a priority unless you want to be surprised on a salvaging run. If you get bitten, there's a 100% chance that you've just been infected with the Nox infection, which will turn you into a zombie. As soon as this happens, say your goodbyes and start making plans for your new character. It's not all bad though. Remember, you can do what you want with your doomed character now, free of fear of getting bit because, well, that boat has long since sailed. Use them to run into dangerous areas with items you don't really care about to try and find rarer loot. Damage them by carrying heavy loot and ferrying said loot to your base. Then, when you're ready for them to die, in a way, go out naked and run as far from your base as possible, preferably attracting loads of zombies in the process and drawing them towards somewhere you don't really care about. That'll make things a bit easier on your new character and preserve your base at the very least. I know it's really sad and you're probably mourning, but don't always start a brand new game once your old character is undead. If you built up decent supplies and a base before they died, you can still go back as a new character and find all of their stuff. And hey, you might even find your old zombified self walking around and get to put them out of their misery once and for all. Making a new character in the same world will also keep all the map data you found from your previous character. To help your future self out even more, Find a pen or pencil to leave notes on your map too, and an eraser to remove unwanted notes.
Remember that all the things your character learns will be gone if they die, so to help out your next character, don't throw books or magazines away once you've read them. Keep them on you and stash them in your base for new characters to use. And finally, there's loads of secrets to find in Knox County as the world is so much bigger than just the starting towns. There's Louisville to explore, a huge city that you can't spawn in so you have to travel there on foot. Once you think you've exhausted your starting location, it's time to put all these tips to good use and hit the road. Good luck. And that's 21 beginner's tips to help you out in Project Zomboid. Do you have any tips that are useful for those new to the game? Let me know in the comments below. If you enjoyed the video, thanks very much, and don't forget to like and subscribe to Eurogamer as we have a new video out every single day. Now, I'm going to go and maybe learn some carpentry in real life just in case Project Zomboid becomes reality, so I'll see you next time.